Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm gonna show you how to set up and grow this. Now this sea of green lettuce has been grown using the Kratky style of hydroponics. I'm going to show you how to eliminate net cups as well as use any container you like for growing in this hydroponic style. Here on Huchos, we try to make gardening as cheap and as accessible as possible. And I believe that hydroponic gardening is the cheapest and most accessible form of gardening for the widest variety of people. Now, there are many techniques that fall under the cheap and accessible category, but there is one standout technique, and that is the Kratky technique of hydroponics. All right, so today you'll need any container. Now, I'm not joking, any container that holds water and keeps light out. Now, the cheapest way to source containers is going to be recycling containers, buckets, food storage containers, and even eskies, or chili bins for those across the puddle. Now, I actually picked up this esky from the RSPCA op shop. So it was $15 and it has a 32 liter capacity. These are reasonably cheap buckets, 20 liter buckets from a hardware store. And this is a recycled protein container. These are actually really expensive, but if you know someone that goes to the gym and uses protein, they'll probably have a heap of these lying around. So hit up the fitness freaks around you and grab a couple of these. The benefit of all of these containers that I have here is, they are light proof. I do not have to do anything to stop the light penetrating through into the nutrient solution. And that is something that we do want to prevent because algae will grow if there is light entering into the nutrient solution. The other thing that I would recommend in your container selection is that it is quite large. I would recommend a minimum of a two liter container to stop you having to top up the nutrient solution regularly. First things first, we're going to plan how many plants we can fit into our Kratky systems. With this container here, it is a four liter container. So I am going to put one hole in the top because it's going to be able to support one lettuce full term. Lettuce require three to six liters of nutrient solution over the entire grow of the plant. For the 20 liter buckets, we'll be doing five holes and I've got a 10 liter bucket here, which we will do three holes for. Now, now this esky is a 32 liter esky, which four divides perfectly into eight. And that will give us a really nice layout on top of the lid. So it's now time to drill the holes. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to hold our plants in place. The holes that we're going to drill are going to depend on your media type. My media type is this. This is a 44 millimeter Jiffy cocoa pellet and I showed you how to propagate these cocoa pellets in this video here and take them all the way to any hydroponic system. And to make the holes, we're just going to be using a 44 millimeter hole saw and this will allow the 44 millimeter pellet to drop right into the hole. One other thing you're going to want to do is you want to space these plants out as far away from each other as possible to give them the most space to grow. So we're going to identify the furthest possible spacing and cut our holes accordingly. And this is where we're going to get a little bit creative. What we're actually going to do is rather than using net cups to hold them in place, because I want to make this as accessible to everyone around the world as possible, um, we're just gonna use food grade bamboo skewers. Now these are gonna be available everywhere in the world. You can just pick them up from your local supermarket. And what we're going to do is, we're just gonna take our skewer. Now this is gonna work a lot better if you're planting seeds into this system, which you can do because you won't have to try and miss the main stem of the plant. But we're just gonna push the skewer straight through and that, that is going to hold our plant in place, like so. If you want, you can put in another skewer going the opposite way, like so, and that will stop the plant from toppling over. So that is 
nice and sturdy, the plant can go through into our crack here reservoir and all you need is the propagation material. And now I'm gonna go along, drill the rest of the holes and we can plant the rest of our plants. Now the S key. So once you've got all of your holes drilled, we're going to want to mix up our nutrient solution. For your larger containers, you don't wanna be hauling around 32 liters, so you're probably gonna to wanna to fill that in place and then add in your plants. But for our smaller containers, we can fill them up with water and just lift them into place. So to mix the nutrients, I've actually got a video just here on how to make stock solution. Now, you don't have to make stock solution. You can just mix in dry nutrients or store-bought liquid nutrients into your water to the manufacturer's instructions. However, if you make a stock solution out of dry nutrients, it's just going to make it a little bit easier than measuring tiny amounts of powder into smaller containers. I'm going to be using my stock solutions, stock solution A, stock solution B, the diamond special T, and the nitro cal, the calcium nitrate. I filled up our bucket, and now we're going to pre-adjust the water to the correct pH. Now, I know how much my nutrient lowers mine, so I'm going to add in my pH up. Put that in, stir it up, and now I'm going to add in my pre-made stock solutions. Now, in my last video, I added dry nutrient, and I added it straight to the res without adding it into hot water first. This caused the pH to change throughout the grow because the pH was fine when I first checked it, but because the nutrient wasn't fully dissolved, it actually dissolved over the grow and changed the pH and caused a couple of inconsistencies within the grow. So that's what I'm trying to avoid this time. And with these stock solutions, I'm adding already dissolved nutrient. So I'm gonna add in B first because the calcium nitrate always goes first. Four mils per liter, I've got 20 mils, but I'm only going to half strength because of the plants that I'm going to have in this being only leafy greens. So I'm going to add in 40 mils our other MPK comes after the nitro cal. So I'm going to add that into our solution and that should give us a pH of about 6.5 and an EC of about 1.2. I'm aiming anywhere from one to 1.5 for the EC of solution. So the pH is 6.5 and the EC is 1.1. I think our leafy greens will grow perfectly fine at that low EC. When we add on our lid, we actually have the solution coming up high enough so that we can dip in our peat pellet and it touches the top of the nutrient solution. And that's all we want. We only want it to touch the top of the nutrient solution so that the roots can grow down into the nutrient solution and start using it up, creating more space for the roots. You can see the bottom of the pellet is wet and that is what we're trying to achieve. I'm gonna go ahead, I can skewer the pellet, like so, and we can just drop it in. And depending on how particular you wanna be, you can add in a second. And that is a net cup free crack key system. <laughs> now I'm gonna add in the rest of the plants and we can place them into our grow area. And now the systems are all set up and ready to go. We can hang our light and start the grow. So if you have different size containers, have the shorter ones in the center where the hot spot is of your light and the taller ones around the outside. You would have a concave shape in the middle of your grow tent so that the most intense light in the center takes the furthest distance to get to the plants. I'm at about 50% intensity at about 24 inches. And the day-night cycle is 18 hours on, six hours off. Let's close it up and turn on the time-lapse camera.
and we have a look at that result. Now, as usual, the negatives first. All of the problems in this grow stem from me having the light too close again, either too close or too powerful. Now, the 50% that I had on at 24 inches, it was just way too powerful for those seedlings. And you can see throughout the grow, I've got tip burn on a ton of the first true leaves, which resulted in a cascade of other problems throughout the grow as well. In addition to this, because I've got the system behind me on the same timer as this system, I've accidentally changed it from a 16 8 day night cycle to a full 24 hour cycle and see that halfway through the grow when the light stops turning on and off. That shouldn't really cause too much of a problem unless you subscribe to the idea of plants needing a light off cycle for rest and recovery. All right, let's take these plants out of the system and we'll have a look at how the roots have formed within our containers. Okay, so this is it. I actually have had a look at this halfway through the grow and the roots were spectacular. Really white, well oxygenated roots. Now, let's have a look at the roots at, well, almost full time. And you can see the roots on those plants are just white. Let's quickly test the nutrient solution to see what's happening. So we have a pH of seven. So perhaps start this pH at 5.5 or six, and then that pH will only go up 0.5, which will be about six or 6.5. And the EC is 0.41, because at the start of the grow, we had an EC of 1.1. So they've stripped out the nutrients and left the water. Okay. Oh, that, that is pretty cool. That is a really good example of air roots. So just above the nutrient solution, you can see that fluffy white air root material. So the nutrient solution would be about here and just above it, we've got some really fine hairs on the roots of the plants. They are the air roots and they are relying, it's almost a fuzz, and they are relying on the moist air to absorb oxygen that the plant can utilize. And you can see down the bottom here, we've got a lot thicker, wirier roots and they are the transport system for the water and nutrients. It's really interesting that the plant can adapt its roots to the environment that they're in. And you can see at the top here where all of the roots explore out and it's selected the roots down the bottom that will become the ones that chase the water as the water level drops in the cracky system. <laughs> I am really excited for this one. Let's lift it up and see what we've got. Heavy. Oh, look. Look at those roots. That is phenomenal. Have a go at that. That's pretty bloody cool. It's literally conformed to the container. That was super satisfying. <laughs> that, that is Kratky. That is cool. The consistency. Now, it's interesting how the root structure has actually supported all of the other root structures and allowed for the entirety of the container to be utilized for the Kratky method. Now I've actually been thinking about the Kratky system with some kind of mesh netting that the roots can use as a scaffolding so that when they get lower in the container they can hang down off that scaffolding and do exactly what is happening here. I've been playing with the idea in my head and that's going to be a future video. It's like a, it's like a root cake. That is some definite root porn right there. Okay, so the audio has been pretty crappy ever since the time lapse up until this point. So thank you for making it this far. <laughs> I actually have a confession to make. At the outset of my hydroponics journey, I was biased against the Kratky technique. I 
without any evidence, just did not think that it was as productive as other techniques, powered and passive techniques like wicking. I honestly didn't comprehend how Kratky could be as productive. And I'll say this, over the experiments that I've done with Kratky and the experience that I've gained through trial and error with other hydroponic systems, I am happy to now say that I was wrong. I never outright said that I didn't like Kratky, but I had actually been avoiding Kratky systems purely for my biases and I was wrong in doing so. So from now on on this channel, we will be exploring Kratky in a lot more depth because I really don't think I've given it the attention that it deserves as a hydroponic growing method and even as a commercial hydroponic growing method. The productivity achieved within Kratky systems is phenomenal and the fact that it's unpowered can be utilized by anyone in the world with access to just hydroponic nutrient and containers is phenomenal. The Kratky technique I have come to believe is probably the way that we can provide a salad bowl for the entire world. So make sure you share this video with anyone that likes salad, anyone that likes gardening, anyone that likes hydroponics. Share the love of Kratky and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.